Good morning and a very warm welcome. You are watching Janata Television and this is English Bulletin with me, Yutsa Patrai. The top stories first. <music> Government issues ordinance to endorse the decision of Constitutional Council by majority vote. Law House Speaker and Opposition Leader boycott Constitutional Council meeting. Ruling party leaders oppose new ordinance, demand immediate withdrawal of the ordinance. Main opposition party alarmed by the new ordinance issued by government calls meeting to discuss the issue. Bomb blast in Kabul kills four. Officials also report separate shooting attack. And Chelsea's hopes of climbing to the top of the table dashed after losing to Wolves. Manchester City settled for a draw. And now the news in detail. The Constitutional Council meeting was held at the Prime Minister's residence yesterday. Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli, who is also the Chairman of the Council, as well as National Assembly Chairman Ganesh Prasad Timul Sinha and Chief Justice Cholindra Samser Jabara Rana were present at the meeting. Timul Sinha and Rana are the members of the Council. Other members of the Council, including Low House Speaker Agni Prasad Sapkota and leader of the main opposition party Sher Bahadur Dilba, did not attend the meeting. A new ordinance issued by the government yesterday has a provision for endorsing the decisions of the council by majority votes of three members, including the Prime Minister. The Constitutional Council meeting was called to fill the vacant post of various constitutional bodies. A total of 45 posts are vacant at different commissions at present. Meanwhile, leaders of the ruling party have protested against the government's decision to pass an ordinance on the Constitutional Council. Leaders say the ordinance should be withdrawn with immediate effect. After Speaker Agni Prasad Sapkota's absence from the meeting of the Constitutional Council made things difficult, the government passed the ordinance on Tuesday on the basis of a majority decision. As soon as the ordinance on the Constitutional Council was issued by President Vidya Devi Pandari, it has drawn widespread condemnation. Executive Chairman of the Nepal Communist Party, Pushpa Kamal Dahal, has expressed objections to the ordinance. Chairman Dahal has also demanded the withdrawal of the ordinance, saying that it was a mockery of democracy to bring the ordinance while the meeting of the NCP's standing committee was underway and a session of the parliament was being demanded. Similarly, Chief Whip of the NCP at the House of Representatives, Dave Gurung, has said that the ordinance is not in line with the democratic norms. After the ordinance was issued by the president, the dissident leaders of the ruling party had a separate meeting at the residence of Chairman Dahal in Kumaltar to discuss the issue. Similarly, senior leader of Congress party Ramchandra Paudal has said that the ordinance is against the essence of the constitution, while Nepali Congress Vice President Bhimalendra Nidhi has termed the ordinance as an authoritarian move. Meanwhile, Janata Samajwadi Party President Upendra Yadav has said that the ordinance on the Constitutional Council has pushed the country towards authoritarian rule. Similarly, main opposition party Nepali Congress has scheduled a meeting of its office bearers today. According to the Congress Joint General Secretary Dr. Prakash Sharan Mahat, the meeting has been called to discuss the ordinance to amend the Constitutional Council Act. The meeting has been called for 1 p.m. today afternoon at party president Sher Bahadur Deoba's residence in Buranil Kanta. Mahat further informed. Former office bearers of the party have also been invited to attend the meeting. Nepali Congress is currently holding a nationwide protest against the government for what they call government atrocities. The opposition party has been alarmed by the First Amendment to the Constitutional Council Act. The ordinance approves a majority of three members to make appointments at vacant posts of constitutional bodies. Congress has deemed the latest government move as undemocratic and has requested that the ordinance be taken back. 
This is Chanata Bulletin. We'll be right back after a short break. Welcome back. After the break, we continue with other national news. Nepali Congress leader Prakash Man Singh has alleged that Prime Minister Oli led government has lost all moral grounds to exercise executive power of the country. Talking to the reporters at a press meet organized by Press Union Thanusa yesterday, leader Shrestha alleged Prime Minister Oli and the cabinet of failing entirely to address the concerns of the country. Prime Minister Oli and his ministers have failed in containing the COVID-19 disease, establishing the rule of law, foreign policy and attaining economic prosperity, Leader Singh affirmed. Leader Singh accused the government of forcing totalitarianism rule undermining democratic practices during the press meet. Sugarcane farmers protesting in Kathmandu demanding payments due have declined to sit for talks with the government. Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Supply had requested the farmers to sit for dialogue at ministry premises yesterday afternoon. The farmers rejected the proposal. The farmers have said they cannot continue making due agreements with the government only to be betrayed again later. Talking to Janata TV, coordinator of Sugarcane Farmers Action Committee, Rakesh Mishra, said the farmers won't fall for government's empty promises unlike in the past. Sugarcane farmers have clearly stated they won't sit for talks unless all they receive, unless it was rather they receive their due payments. The farmers have affirmed the protest will only come to an end if the government implements last year's agreement with the farmers. In other news, the government yesterday confirmed 936 new cases of coronavirus across the country. Following the latest round of tests, the total cases of coronavirus in the country have climbed to 250,180. The number of active cases in the country has dropped to 9,881 from the overnight tally of 10,955. According to the Ministry of Health and Population, altogether 238,569 infected persons have recovered from the disease in the country so far. The death toll from coronavirus has climbed to 1,730 across the country with the confirmation of 40 new fatalities yesterday. Nepal is currently among the top 40 countries that have been most affected by the pandemic. The United States tops the list with 17.11 million confirmed cases, followed by India with 9.93 million cases. And now, the news from Economic Front. The Nepal Airlines Corporation has submitted a 10-year unified business plan to the Ministry of Culture, Tourism and Civil Aviation. The business plan introduced to offset the corporation's losses over the years will run from 2021 to 2030. According to the plan, even if the first three years remain at a loss, it is projected to turn a profit by 2024 and a gross profit of Rs 5.3 billion by 2030. Going forward, as per the plan, it is projected that the expenditure will be Rs 23.76 billion annually in 2021 and the expenditure will increase by 9% every year. According to the corporation's plan, eight new destinations, including Sydney, Colombo, Shanghai, Indonesia and Riyadh will have to be added into its fleet for international flights to make a profit from 2024 onwards and six aircrafts will be needed to achieve that target, nar to target four narrow body and two wide body aircrafts. Similarly, for the improvement of domestic flights, Kathmandu, Nepalganj, Pokhara and Biratnagar should be made the main base of flights in hilly areas, the report states. The business plan has been prepared on the basis of the government's 15th five-year plan, government policies and programs, Aviation Policy 2063, Report of the Ministry of Tourism, Recommendation of the Reform Suggestions Committee 
and a review of business plans prepared in the past. A government team left for Bangladesh yesterday for the procurement of chemical fertilizer. The government is preparing to purchase chemical fertilizers from government from rather Bangladeshi government on G2G deal after its attempts to borrow the fertilizer did not materialize. The Nepali delegation comprising of four members led by Managing Director of the Agriculture Inputs Company Limited, Netra Bahadur Bhandari, is scheduled to sign a deal for the purchase of 50,000 metric tons of urea. The team will submit its proposal to Bangladesh today and will subsequently sign the agreement. We'll be taking a short break here at Janata Bulletin. Stay tuned for international and sports news. Welcome back and now the international news. A bombing and a shooting attack in Kabul yesterday killed at least three people, including a deputy provincial governor, AP reported. According to the news agency, a deputy provincial council chief was also killed in western Afghanistan. The attacks are the latest relentless violence in Afghanistan, even as the Taliban and Afghan government negotiators hold talks in Qatar. The warring sides are trying to hammer out a peace deal that could put an end to the decades of war. According to Tariq Aryan, an Afghan Interior Ministry spokesman, a sticky bomb attached to the armoured vehicle belonging to Kabul's deputy provincial governor killed two people and wounded two others. The deputy provincial governor Mahbullah Mohibi was killed alongside his secretary while two of his bodyguards were wounded. The bombing took place in Makroyan neighbourhood of Kabul. Gunmen in Kabul also shot and killed a police officer and wounded another policeman. You are watching Janata Bulletin and now the latest from the world of sports. Frank Lampard blamed fixture congestion and fatigue for his side's dramatic injury time loss to Wolverhampton Wanderers. Chelsea travelled to Wolves on Tuesday night to play their fifth match in 15 days in December. The Blues inform a French striker Olivier Giroud scored a sublime volley in the 49th minute to give his side the lead. However, Wolves struck back immediately in the 66th through Bodens and managed to break Chelsea's hearts by scoring in the 95th minute through Pedro Neto to seal the game. The loss means Chelsea's hopes of going top of the table before Liverpool and arch-rivals Tottenham face off later tonight were dashed. The back-to-back -back loss puts Chelsea fifth on the table with 22 points. Another match of the evening, Manchester City drew at home to West Brom. Aikai Gonwaun opened the scoring for Pep Guardiola's side in the 30th minute in what looked like a routine win for the citizens. However, a Ruben Dias own goal in the 43rd minute brought a West Brom level. The tourists then defended valiantly as they drew the match to win an important point on the road. Today, the top of the table clash between Tottenham and Liverpool will, will take place while Leicester City, Arsenal, Everton are all in action. Karim Benzema scored twice as a Real Madrid beat. It was rather a Real Madrid beat Athletic Bilbao to move level on points at the top of the Spanish La Liga. This was Real Madrid's third win on the bounce, which brings them level on points with a Real Sociedad on 26 points with the same number of games. Atletico Madrid, who lost to their city rivals Real on Sunday, are also on 26 points but with two games in hand. In the match played yesterday at the San Diego Bernabeu, Atletic's Raul Gracia was sent off early on after two bookings for falls on Tony Cruz, who put Real ahead with a first-time drive before the halfway mark. Ander Kappa equalised for Atletic at the second attempt after he was denied by Thibaut Courtois. 
Benjamin then scored twice to win the fame reel, heading in and then thrilling an entry time second. Barcelona, who are nine points behind the trial, host suicided on Wednesday. We are at the end of Janata Bulletin and the headlines once again. Government issues ordinance to endorse decision of constitutional body by majority votes. Law House Speaker and Opposition Leader boycott Constitutional Council meeting. Ruling Party leaders oppose new ordinance, demand immediate withdrawal of the ordinance. Main Opposition Party alarmed by the new ordinance, calls meeting to discuss the issue. Bomb blast in Kabul kills four. Officials also report a separate shooting attack. And Chelsea's hope of climbing to the top of the table dashed after losing to Wolves. Manchester City settled for a draw. And that's all from the English News Desk for today. You can follow Janata Television and our programs on various social media platforms, including on our website, janatasamachar.com. Keep watching Janata Television. Namaste.